hello everyone. So the, the room is uh, quite crowded. That's a good thing, that I guess. Uh, thank you for you to, uh, to be here. Uh, I'm Raphael Delhomme. I work at Oslandia, uh, which is a small company uh, specialized in geospatial data treatment and analyze. So I will present you some works that we uh, did the uh, last two years uh, about geospatial data processing. So uh, we won't, uh, we won't uh, talk about how to improve a uh, state-of-the-art uh, algorithm. Uh, this is more a matter of designing a proof of concept uh, in a like uh, eat and run process. So I will design uh, detail of all these uh, elements. So just to begin, as I said, I am working at Oslandia. Uh, as an R&D engineer, uh, so as all uh, Oslandia teammates, I'm working on geospatial data solutions. And uh, during these uh, past two years, I work a lot on AI-related algorithm. So that's a part of what will be presented today. So, Oslandia is not an uh, artificial intelligence focused company. Uh, as I said just before, we are more a geospatial data uh, related company. But, um, as you might know, if you are there, uh, we have a lot of uh, democratization of aerial images, uh, aerial and satellite images. And the fact is, this is a very interesting use case to just to try and to make some. Uh, some uh, fast results, and um, we merely focus on the building footprint detection use case. Uh, so, the point is that you have an aerial image, and you want to just discover where the houses and the buildings are on the on the map. So, you have typical Boolean mask as on the right. You have building in white and background in black. So, how to mix up these two concepts: deep learning and geospatial data. Um, so at Oslandia we use a lot uh, Python and all the related Python library, and we consider two main uh, two main types of algorithm, which are segmentic segmentation and instant segmentation. So I won't detail uh, all of the use cases now, but I can uh, provide this slide uh, a more detailed uh, more detailed explanation. So let's imagine you have an aerial image uh, on the left. Uh, you have some buildings on it, and if you want to uh, process to seg uh, semantic segmentation, you will produce as many masks, as many Boolean masks as you have uh, classes. So on the middle, you have a semantic segmentation typical mask. You have a first Boolean mask with a complete building. Uh, then on the top right, you have two buildings that can be uh, said as incomplete, and the last uh, mask on the, at the bottom, which is a foundation. So we will just differentiate, differentiate uh, the building types. At the opposite, if you are doing instant segmentation, you will build as many masks as you have uh, objects. So you have one mask for the building on the top right, one mask for the building at the bottom right, and so on. So that's two different problems. In our, uh, in our works, we considered two interesting data sets, and the first one is very close to the force 4 g uh, scope, because it was released, uh, maybe not during, but uh, in the, the period of the last force 4 g conference in Dar es Salaam, in Tanzania. And the, um, the, aim, the aim of this data set was to identify all the um, available building on a map, on a typical aerial image, uh, by differentiating uh, three classes of, of building. So we had complete building, unfinished building, and foundations. The fact that uh, we have very high resolution image makes no need to have plenty of image. So there was only 13 label image, but uh, with as many pixels that yeah, the data set can be considered as really uh, uh, big. But the second interesting data set that we focused on was the aerial image data set, which was released by a French research institute, which is called INRIA. 
Uh, in this dataset, we had uh, 360 images, uh, at the half of which were for training. And uh, in such a dataset, there is no distinction on, uh, of building classes. We, just, uh, we are just trying to identify the building footprints. So, in the first case, the resolution was like in mean like uh, seven centimeter per pixel, uh, and in the second case, it was uh, around uh, 30 centimeter per pixel. So the resolution is far more um, uh, precise than uh, in the satellite uh, satellite image case. But uh, yeah, the, um, the data capture uh, was was done with uh, drone drones. So there is an interesting point uh, with such datasets. Uh, we are trying to, uh, to consider building footprints, but if we just think about it, we had this information, we can find this information with another uh, dataset. That's typically OpenStreetMap data. And this OpenStreetMap data uh, can be really close to the INRIA um, in dataset. So we try to just rebuild some labels to find again the, the building footprints by leaving the RL image dataset and by building it from the OpenStreetMap database. So by using some classical geo tools like GDAL to get the image coordinates, uh, by with overpass to querying to query uh, the OpenStreetMap data, uh, then by storing the by storing the data into a database by generating raster tiles. If we want to get the uh, building footprints, uh, the OpenStreetMap building footprints as images, uh, we can just detail all these steps and uh, rebuild the, the labels. So we, we did a, a very small proof of concept. And as you might see, uh, the OpenStreetMap label are very close to the original uh, data sets um, in such a way that they probably use it uh, as a basis. So at, on the left, you have a typical uh, INRIA image. On the middle, uh, this is the labeled version of uh, the image uh, provided by the INRIA. And on the right, that's the version that we produced uh, by our own way. So uh, the, the building are not necessarily, uh, and the images are not necessarily equ equivalent because there is probably a work on OpenStreetMap tags to recover the exact uh, footprints. So that's it for the data set you, uh, we used. Uh, now let's talk about uh, some steps. So when we are trying to design a, a proof of concept and to design the data pipeline in this topic, uh, we have to just consider some classical steps. And the first of which being the data parsing. So you might be very um, aware of that. So we have a first, training, a first set, which is a training set. We had a bunch of georeferenced images with known coordinates. Uh, and uh, these images can be accompanied by uh, GeoJSON labels for uh, having the buildings or another solutions. Uh, it's to provide the label as images. So that was the case for the INRIA dataset. And you also need a testing set with images that uh, don't have to be used for training. So uh, that's basically a typical uh, machine learning scheme. Then uh, we, are, uh, we get some uh, georeference data. Uh, the first thing to do, actually, when you are dealing with uh, deep learning algorithm, uh, because of the requirements in terms of, um, in terms of uh, hardware and uh, just memory-related stuff, is to uh, tile the, the big image you have. You, you can't feed uh, machine learning and deep learning algorithm with uh, very high resolution image as uh, we, we get uh, at the beginning. So we just tile, uh, tiled our images uh, with a fixed uh, size and you have several uh, options to do that. The first one is JDAL uh, with the JDAL command. 
or you can be more Python focused by using NumPy and just work on the data, uh, the image data. Here you have some uh, some images uh, as uh, little or smaller tiles. Uh, you can train your model. So there is plenty of uh, interesting question in this uh, in this topic. Uh, the first one and. When we arrived at this point, that was really new for us. Uh, you just have to design a lot of settings in terms of hyperparameter. Uh, there is a lot of things to tune, but which, uh, which tuning is the best? Uh, that's a very, very uh, challenging question uh, in, this, uh, in this area. Then we really fastly uh, arrive into a, a kind of wall uh, that was the the hardware uh, stuff. So you can't uh, or you can do this with only CPU, but you have to be very 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 patient. So that's probably not the best idea you will have in this topic. Uh, you can use, of course, like AWS uh, nodes and and so on. So in our case, we had uh, like an old computer with a, a, a nice a graphical card. And we just said, oh, yeah, that's a GPU, let's use it. And we were, um, we were very, very better uh, in terms of computation time with just one GPU. And for our needs, that was just sufficient. But clearly, do not do that with only CPUs. So uh, I talked about training. Uh, at this point, we have tiles, we have the items, the building, uh, stored as JSON files or GeoJSON files. Uh, you can train a model uh, like uh, HDF files. So we used Keras, that's a typical uh, file format that you can find this uh, library. And then the, the nice stuff, the model inference with your model, and you can see that with a bunch of Python lines, uh, you can just uh, load your model uh, set your train weight into the, the model and do your predictions. And at this step, you do not have buildings, you ju just have a lot of tables with a lot of figures into, into them. So that's pretty classical uh, here uh, again. But what, uh, and it, what is actually interesting us, uh, it's not tables of figures, it's more uh, buildings. So we have to uh, just consider again the geo tools to transform the table of figures into buildings. The first uh, very challenging part was to uh, just reconstruct, re rebuild the polygon controls. So we used OpenCV, which is a pretty uh, canonical uh, solution uh, in uh, image processing. Then uh, the point one of the easiest points was to transform the pixel into geographical coordinates, as we have uh, georeference data, uh, that's pretty easy to do. And then uh, we can just consider the uh, Python library to build uh, buildings as polygons. So in terms of results, um, this slide, uh, I, I, I like these slides because it says something, but yeah, there are a lot of challenges that are not answered there. Uh, we have um, an input image, which is basically larger than just a single tile. So you can uh, try to predict some buildings. Uh, in green, for example, you have the complete class. In yellow, you have the incomplete class. And when you run uh, just a simple uh, segmentic segmentation model, you just you are just doing a prediction at the pixel scales. So, uh, if you uh, predict all your pixels, uh, a same building can be composed of different classes. So that's not what you want. Uh, so either you use a, a smarter model, or you can just use a post-processing step, and that's uh, the choice we made. Uh, so in the post-processing step. We just considered the output of the deep learning method uh, at the top, at the top right, and then we uh, build polygons, simplified polygons, by sh choosing really uh, a class. So we can see that in terms of pure results, that not so uh, 
smart, but let's say it's a good first, uh, it's a good first uh, idea of what can be the, the building of on this image. There is another uh, really, uh, there is another really challenging task. It is the reconstitution of all the tiles. So we are doing prediction on tiles, but you have to imagine that your um, your high resolution image is composed of yeah, like hundreds of, of tiles. So the point is how to just uh, recombine all this information. Uh, in this example, uh, I kind of cheats because the building are not uh, the, the tile uh, front, uh, the tile uh, border is not uh, on a building or just like a, a few pixel but when you are doing prediction you have to imagine that one part of a building can be predicted in one tile and the other part of the building will be predicted in the tile just beneath it so you have to be very, very uh, like rigorous uh, to reconstitute, to rebuild your buildings. So that this presentation was merely uh, uh, like uh, uh, an insight of what can be done when you are curious, when you want to design a pipeline, and you have to, when you want to get some fast results. Um, we learn a lot of things in this uh, in this aspect. Uh, we design our proof of concept. Our results are not so good. We are we were just shortly at the state of the art when we focused on model, but like we didn't uh, work on it on the model part of the the project uh, for like six months. So I'm pretty sure that today we are not at the state of the art. We have to be very very. Um, we have to continue all the efforts. Uh, to stay at the state of the art. Our objective for the future will won't be to stay necessarily uh, to to keep the best results, uh, but we will be interested in just design a QGIS, QGIS plugin to introduce this kind of uh, of work uh, into QGIS and to provide an alternative solution uh, to the existence. I don't know if I have time. I have a little demonstration, but one minute? Okay, I will try it. I like the chat. So, we are uh, confident with uh, Flask, applica Flask uh, web applications, and we just designed one for uh, just showing uh, results. And we just work on a few, a few data sets. So, there is a very data set too. Uh, for example, if on the Tanzania dataset, you can just be curious on the just have an insight of the results. Uh, disclaimer: they are not necessarily always good. But that's an interesting case we are finding. So you, you can just play with it, try to uh, predict the different uh, and. Uh, this other example is interesting because we find the building, but we do not post-process the results. So we just we still have some noise data between the classes. So that was uh, this application. Do not and if you are very curious, you can test the right yourself. But let's keep it for another day. And. You can find more on our blog. Uh, we have a bunch of GitHub repository if you, you want to check uh, what we did. And uh, the um, data application is at data.oslandia.io slash deeposlandia for this, this application. Thank you for your attention. So question time. One question over there. Yeah. Then do you, since your tiles have to be a certain maximum size, do you rescale your input image so that you are generally certain that your structures will fit within the structures you're looking for to avoid having many that cross tiles? Or yeah. Uh, okay. In in the training time, uh, 
we just uh, randomly select X and Y coordinates and to get a lot of images. So we made the hypothesis that the, the uniform generation uh, allows us to just consider all the, all the, the raw image. Uh, we, in the past, we tried to rescale the images, but in, it adds some noisy uh, behaviors. So we just crop uh, tiles. We do not resize uh, them anymore. Hi. Um, do you have any performance metrics for how the models performed? Yeah, we measured it uh, for training and validation. Uh, so we used uh, accuracy, but the accu accuracy was not necessarily interesting. We have very good ac accuracy score, but uh, visually uh, the, the results was not so, not so good. We tried to implement the intersection of our union, but it's an ongoing work. It's not finished, so we can't give any figures for that. Cool, thanks. Hello. Hello. Hi. <laughs> the mic. So I have two, two short questions. One, you were mentioning that you have uh, vectors as, um, as label data uh, that you use for ground truth, and you also mentioned that you have rasters. Yeah. So one of the questions would be, how did you automate the, the labeling if you needed to do the manual labeling and create the, the labeled rasters? How do you automate this if you have like thousands, hundreds of thousands of uh, tiles? Okay, uh, the point is uh, a good part of the source code is uh, dealing with just data sets uh, pre-processing, data sets gathering and pre-processing. So we just have uh, uh, specified modules for each data sets. And um, in, in the end, uh, the labels, they are just um, tables of zero and ones. So when you have images, that's pretty fast. Uh, when you have a, a vectorized label, you have to just do the, the opposite uh, work that I present for post process. You have just to transform your, uh, your buildings into uh, mask, uh, Boolean masks. Uh, right, so j just to explain a bit my, my question related to the fact that uh, if you're doing agronomy, for instance, you have no ground truth, so you need to manually label the data. So you need to have someone actually paint the pixels and uh, give you the, the raster back as uh, ground truth. So this is a bit where I was uh, aiming. Uh, and like second question, uh, once you create the tiles for a particular image, how do you handle the, um, how do you, keep track of which labels go to which tiles and uh, whether or not you want to use them later on and um, well, okay. retrain the model if needed. Okay. Um, the fact is the image are georeferenced, uh, so we, we have their coordinates, but we have the coordinates of the label too, and we just have to um, process the image in the same time than the labels. So if you choose a, a random X and, and a random Y, you crop your image, your raw image, uh, considering these coordinates, but you, are, you have to do the same exact thing for the label version of the image. And if it's uh, vectorized, uh, if it's uh, vectorized information, um, you are forced to transform it as a as a table, as an NumPy table uh, at the moment. So you j we, you will uh, crop it with the same coordinates, uh, the same exact way. I can't uh, I can't know what I can add. But, uh, 